pretty quick. I'm not going to sit up here and ramble anymore. So uh, for her first time speaking at a uh, computer security conference and first time at ShmooCon, I'd like you all to give a, a warm welcome to ShmooCon to Omaha. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, so before I dig into this, did anybody in here go to DEF CON 26 this year? Yeah? So great time, right? My mom, who might be watching the live stream right now, I don't know. She's, she's about to turn 70 this year, and if she's watching, I'm, I'm sorry about that. She's about to turn 70, went to her first DEF CON. It was a blast, like just one of the most welcoming, wel welcoming places you can go, right? Um, but one of the things that we saw this year, um, and you might have seen some of this on Twitter, was there was some current concerns about security coming into the rooms where they weren't expected, right? Um, these are some of the tweets that came up. If, if you can't read them, I mean, check out Katie Masuris. Uh, she w wrote one of the more prolific strings. Uh, Kim Zetter, like journalist, right? Well-respected person in the community, uh, tweeting about security, essentially breaking into her room and not having the chance to validate that they were actually hotel security. Um, there were reports of people like losing soldering irons, people losing lock picks. Um, it, was a, it was a huge deal. Um, some people came up with creative solutions. Uh, Bo Woods, is he in the room, maybe? I don't know. Uh, he actually figured out to put a piece of paper like in, in the lock slot saying, you don't get to enter this room without my permission. I don't know whether that works. Um, Another option would be you know, security through obscurity. Don't leave any of your stuff in a place that would normally be searched. I don't think that's necessarily practical. Um, but we should expect to continue to see this in future years. I think the policy is maybe supposed to get a little more sensible. DEF CON did a great job of, of posting on their, on their site what we should expect from security at hotels and what our rights are from security at hotels. Um, there's probably going to be a pretty short interval that if you leave your do not disturb sign on the on the uh, door and don't accept housekeeping for a while, they're probably going to come check out your room. This is left over from the Mandalay Bay shooting. Kind of understandable, in my opinion, but we won't even get into that. The issue is if guests want to check uh, you know, their ID, their uniform, call down to the front desk, verify who they are. There was an issue with that last year. Um, hopefully, that will no longer be the case. It looks like Caesars has reviewed their policy. Um, and you can read more about this on the DEF CON website. Uh, and the link down to the policy is down there at the bottom. Um, what security is not supposed to do is open your closet, open your drawers, open your Pelican cases, uh, move any of your stuff, take any of your stuff. Um, and that's all well and good. I'm not sure how many in the people in the room would actually believe that we can trust security people at various levels of training to actually do that. Um, so, so what's our option, right? Like, what can we actually do at that point if you actually want to stay in the hotel? Um, I, th I think that probably like Fallout style, you know, trip wires, trip lasers are not actually an option. Um, I mean, that would be that'd be pretty effective, but uh, probably you know sue or not get to have DefCon there again at, at a minimum, right? That'd be not so great. Uh, so what can we do instead? What what other kind of trip wires or booby traps could we set so that just we know if somebody's messing with our stuff, right? Um, so, so what I put together, <laughs> what I put together was to, uh, this is literally, you know, Raspberry Pi, 35 bucks. Um, three other components all together probably cost like five bucks. So you can multiply that times however however many things you want to protect. Or it's not even protection, right? It's just let's figure out how to detect if someone's mes messing with your stuff. Um, I have all these with me if you want to take a closer look. Jumper wires, very basic. Hopefully everybody's seen that before. These little 433 megahertz receivers, um, super cheap, especially if you go on like Alibaba, if, if, if you're cool with that, right? Uh, or Amazon or whatever. You can get these things in little, uh, they're like receiver transmitter packs and it's, you know, three to five bucks. It's, it's nothing. Um, and then the, the kind of white block down there uh, in the bottom right, that's actually you can buy these individually, but they come with security sets. It's a magnet that when the magnet gets separated, it just beacons out its own little RF code at, at 433 megahertz. So pretty useful, but you're going to have to like either pay for a nice security system or figure out another way to use it in a creative manner like this community likes to do, right? Um, so the idea here is that you'd be able to, you know, like get some mounting tape and stick this little security d device to your drawer, to your, you know, one side of your soldering iron, you put the other side on the desk so you know if your, your soldering iron's been moved. 
So in order to do this, uh, you just got to set up your Raspberry Pi. It's pretty easy to get the pinout for your Raspberry Pi. Um, there's two commands that'll, that'll help you out. Pinout's the easiest one. Um, so once you've got your Raspberry Pi hooked up, uh, lots of instructions for that if anybody's new to this. Great way to start out with uh, hardware and just learning about security if, if you're new to the community. Um, and what you want to look for is you want to look for power. It'll say 5V, right? Uh, ground, GND. And you're looking for a free GPIO pin. I think for my example, I'm using pin 27. I've tested pin 17. That works great. Uh, by the way, this is all on a Raspberry Pi 3 uh, B+. Plus, so um, I'm relatively sure it would work on other Raspberry Pis, but the uh, pinout's probably different. So keep that in mind. So once, you know, just write those down, take a note. And then this is actually, in my opinion, it gets pretty intuitive at this point. If you know which pin is which, on the, on the back of these uh, receivers, they're all made pretty much the same and they're marked. So if you can't figure out that like the ground pin needs to go to the thing on the receiver that says GND, like maybe it's time to step back and take a little like additional training. So it's, it, <laughs> just saying. Um, so, you, so yeah, you'll have your ground pin. There's a couple data pins. You can just pick one of those to uh, hook up to the GPIO. Um, and then you've got your, your power as well, which that one's less intuitive. It's marked as VCC usually or something like that. And that's what you want to hook up to your, to your 5 volt. And you literally, you can just hook that straight up to the Pi. If you want to get fancy, just do it through a breadboard. Um, you could add, you know, blinking lights or something to it if you wanted to. But just for a simple solution, this will get you there. And before you can do anything with it, you need to install a few dependencies. The uh, Pi GPIO uh, program is great. Super intuitive to install your normal app git thing. And then you want to start up the daemon to keep it running. Um, and this is going to enable you, you to do whatever you want with those, uh, those pinouts. Um, so you check, make sure your daemon's running. And then I'm, I'm doing all this in Python because it's comfy. And again, for anybody who's new to the community or new to this, Python's a great place to start learning a language if you haven't before. Um, for Python 3, it'll be pip 3. If you're using uh, Python 2, stick to regular pip. Um, and you just need to install two libraries, the, the um, PyGPIO 0 and PyGPIO libraries. Uh, then there's an awesome library I found that somebody else wrote, uh, and the link to it is obviously right there. Um, it's, a, it's an underscore 433 library to deal with everything uh, 433 megahertz. And this is great because you don't have to worry about figuring out you know, how frequently it's, it's transmitting the beacon. It'll, do, it'll figure out the exact uh, length of each of your ups and downs, and it'll just translate the code for you. So this is totally uh, user friendly. Um, the Python script starts out real simple. Uh, import time, you may or may not need that. You'll see at the end. Uh, you need the PyGPIO GPIO and, of course, this lovely 433 library uh, that makes it super easy. Um, and then what you want to do, uh, this is all going to be up on a GitHub that I'll show at the end, but you just want to change that Rx variable there. Change it to whichever pin you chose, so whether it's 17 or 27. Just pick one of those. And then I just made a favorite things dictionary so that, you know, like each of these little magnets would rep represent one of my favorite things. Um, I'm going to skip down to about halfway through this page. We'll come back around to the callback. Um, but pretty much this 433 library takes care of everything. All you have to do is send it um, the information about which pin you're using and what function you want it to go to, and then you just run it. And the only thing I had to do, this is where the uh, time thing could come in if you wanted to. I just kept a continuous loop going so that it would just stay on. Uh, you could have it run for, you know, if you're going to be away from your room for three hours, set it to just run three hours, um, and it'll keep this thing detecting. So what that 433.rx thing does, it calls back to the Rx callback so that whenever it's, it receives information from one of these devices, it'll figure out what the code is, it will, uh, the way I wrote this one, it'll, it'll print it out. It'll let you know that, hey, this, this thing's been moved. The, the jimmies have been rustled. I don't know, like it's, this, that something's not right here. Um, but then uh, it'll also let you know if it's a code that it hasn't seen before. So if you've got like 10 of these things, you don't have to go in and hard code into the script like these are all my codes. It'll detect the new ones and give you a chance to name them. Um, and you'll be able to kind of just leave that running and go. Um, so I know better than to try to do a live demo in, like for a first talk, right? And I've seen those go wrong too many times. Uh, so instead, you're going to get a video of how this works. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so you run the script, those two little, uh, hopefully you guys can see the two little white spots there, those are the magnets. It's probably too small to read here, but it's saying, hey, something new has been disturbed. I'm throwing in the text, this is thing one, and tried to make it pretty visual with the exclamation points. It sends this beacon over and over and over, um, just the way these little magnets work. So you get a bunch of text letting you know it happened. I move the second one, it says, hey, this is a new thing. I name it thing two. Um, and then you'll see that it, it, what it shows each time that you're separating each one of those. Now what's cool, some of these little magnet things, they've got a little button you can push to test them too. So this last little bit is just testing out each of those. And I have all this equipment with me if you want to take a look at it and see what this looks like. But it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's very simple pieces, very simple script. Somebody else has already written the library, so it's not something you have to figure out. Um, lots of room for improvement, right? So these little receivers, super cheap. Again, if you're like buying off of Alibaba or whatever, it's going to be lowest common denominator for, for what this thing could be, especially if you're going super cheap. Um, the wavelength for 433 megahertz is about 70 centimeters, so you just have to do some uh, uh, fraction of that, essentially. So if you, if you take a wire that's half of that, 35 centimeters, or half of that, 17.5 centimeters, and you solder it, you probably can't see there's a little teeny dot above the antenna that's already on the receiver. If you solder it there, you're going to be able to increase the distance, increase the reliability of, of your little receiver thing. So if you're into the soldering thing, then that's an easy change to make. Obviously, you saw that when it does beacon out, it beacons out like, you know, 20 of them or something, right? So that's super annoying if you've got some sort of notification set up. Uh, so, you know, if you just wanted to check like, hey, do I have a new notification in the last 20 seconds or whatever? Um, you could set, up, set that up to work for you. Okay, so, so now you've got this thing working, right? What, what good does it do you if you're not in the room and monitoring your Raspberry Pi? There are a million scripts out there to get this information back to you, right? Um, if I'd had the 50-minute talk, I maybe would have demoed some of that. Maybe next year, I don't know. Um, but a couple of the libraries I found, like if you wanted to have it tweet out, like some of the people were sort of crowdsourcing, like, okay, who's been searched? Who's seen something weird through their, through their peephole? Who's... Uh, you know, seeing housekeeping doing something they're not supposed to do or security doing something they're not supposed to do. All that was happening on Twitter towards the end of DEF CON 26, and it was cool because everybody became more alert and more aware of it. So you could definitely kind of do the same thing here. Um, you could also just set it up to email you or send you a text. So there's a, there's a library that allow you to just use Python to send email. Um, or you could set up a, a Slack bot, which I'm sure everybody would love to have the notification every 20 seconds on, uh, on general, um, where it's saying, you know what, like, this guy's, you know, going to the bathroom and, like, opening the door or whatever. That's probably, probably not what, what you want to see, especially with the, the new logo with the dick swastika or whatever it is. That's, uh, <laughs> probably don't want that popping up a lot. Um, so that's, that's pretty much the, the content of this. If you would like to see the, the, the script, it's literally like less than a page. Uh, super simple. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, that's the GitHub, GitHub that it's posted to you. I'm on Twitter. If you're wondering what those digits are and you're, you're not used to seeing 41, it should be pretty intuitive, but it's Omaha in all caps uh, and hex. Um, or you can just shoot me an email and I'll be happy to get back to you. Also, after this, I'm probably going to swing by Wireless Village, just because this is up their alley. So if you just want to chat in person and not in a giant room, uh, that's totally cool, too. Um, the sources, I would recommend kind of going back and looking at some of the posts from DEF CON 26. It's interesting. I don't actually want to address that controversy here. Personally, I think DEF CON's done a great job of addressing it, and we'll, we'll see what happens next year. I still want to stay close to the con, so this is why I'm trying to figure out how to do something like this. Um, and then you can, you can see some of the news from that. And then, of course, the uh, Pi GPIO uh, code. There's a whole site with all kinds of examples. I think the one they used for 433 megahertz was like a garage door opener or something. So there's all, you know, once you get to learn that library, there's a million things you can do with it. Uh, it's pretty flexible. But other than that, any questions? So the question was, have I thought about adding a, a camera or something like that? I think that's a great idea. Uh, I was thinking about it. There's actually like these really, cute, they almost look like little ribbon strips that are cameras that will attach to the Raspberry Pi. So all you have to do is integrate it into the Python code, just trigger something to happen with that camera. Totally possible. Sky's the limit. 
<laughs> the question was, have I thought of adding glitter? That sounds fabulous. Um, my fear would be that this is not housekeeping's fault. It's, uh, it's a security issue, and I wouldn't want to punish the person who has to come clean up the room. Um, that being said, it would be pretty fabulous. So the, the question is, uh, think about adding a uh, 3G or 4G antenna so that you can get alerts in case you know, you're not connected to Wi-Fi or something like that, yeah? Again, great idea because it's just a script. You can add on whatever you want to it, right? Um, and there's no reason you wouldn't be able to do that with a Raspberry Pi. Not that I've seen, but you should be able to do this with any sensor. These are just like, again, lowest common denominator, super simple. It's super cheap little one. They just send out their own little individual code. Um, but the batteries, I mean, I've been playing with this since, I don't know, since like August maybe, and nothing's died on me yet. So it should last you easily through a weekend trip. Uh, I think, was somebody over here? No? Yeah, I haven't had an issue with it yet. So I didn't have a lot of good luck with the range. Um, Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, so the question was, how about the range? Um, I didn't have very good luck getting, getting it to transmit very far. And even when I did, what tended to happen was uh, the codes would get garbled. So I'd get the little notification, you have a new code. And it would be like a, a four-digit code instead of a 10-digit code. Um, so that's why I would recommend looking at the antenna length and improving that. Anybody else? Oh, one in the back there. So the question is, how do, you, how do you keep someone from using this against you? Like if you uh, visit a buddy, I guess, and, they, and, and add some stuff to their house that then, I mean, that's a matter of physical security, right? That's, do you lock your doors? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> is, that, is that your question? Like. Yeah, you absolutely could. So that so the so the question was, could I uh, pick up something that that grabs the the what the sensors are transmitting and keep track of what someone else is tracking in their own home? Yeah, obviously that that could be an issue. Um, if you wanted to, you could you can encrypt whatever the the Pi is sending out. Um, hopefully that's already done. Uh, so that way they don't know what kind of alerts you're getting. But just like any security device that's operating over wireless, yeah, it could be picked up. It's just a code. It's just 433 megahertz. Yep, yep. Super easy. So you just have to have this one receiver. You don't have to have like SDR or anything to pick it up. Yes, absolutely. It, it can be jammed was, was the question. Yep. What frequency? Does it hop? Not these particular cheap little devices. So they could, they could be jammed. Anything else? Thank you, guys. Great first talk. Yay. I think someone said they were bringing me a beer after this, right? Yeah? I see it. Okay.